You are listening to the It's Logical Podcast. Episode 10, Is the Universe Expanding? I've often found that some of the most captivating ideas in our modern world come from the realm of cosmic exploration. The sheer scale and mystery of the cosmos have enthralled human beings for millennia. We gaze into the sky and witness countless points of light, each one potentially housing stars, planets, or even entire galaxies. And for nearly a century, we've lived under the consensus that the universe is not merely vast, but that it is also stretching out in every direction, expanding relentlessly, as if each galaxy were racing away from all the others. The big question then is, are we absolutely sure about this? From the day I sat in my fourth grade classroom, entranced by a simple conversation about colors, how certain wavelengths of light are absorbed, others reflected, and how that interplay creates all the beautiful hues we perceive, I've been fascinated by how deeply our universe depends on interactions at the smallest scale. My teacher said something that stuck with me. Whenever we see a color, it means photons, those tiny packets of light with no rest mass, are in constant dance with matter, giving rise to the palette of our everyday experience. If photons are so integral to how we see, I thought, then might they also play a critical role in how we interpret the cosmos itself? In the 1920s, Edwin Hubble discovered that distant galaxies displayed a characteristic shift toward the red end of the spectrum, called a redshift, and deduced that the universe was expanding. Decades later, the discovery of white dwarf supernovae as standard candles seemed to confirm that galaxies far, far away were accelerating outward. This was revolutionary. It led us to believe in an expanding universe that began with a Big Bang. But what if there's more to the story? What if the redshift is not purely a sign of expansion, but could be influenced or even caused by photons interacting with matter, transferring their energy, or undergoing a form of decay? New research on the mass and brightness of colliding white dwarfs suggests that these cosmic explosions may not be as uniform as once believed, calling into question one of the foundational pillars supporting the theory of cosmic expansion. Historically, humanity's perspectives on the cosmos have evolved in tandem with our technological and theoretical advancements. There was a time, not long ago, when most scholars assumed the universe was static. The idea that everything was eternal and unchanging was the prevailing view in Western science and philosophy for centuries. Then, in 1929, astronomer Edwin Hubble published his groundbreaking findings based on observations made at the Mount Wilson Observatory in California. He analyzed light coming from distant galaxies and found that almost all of them showed a spectral shift toward the red end of the spectrum, the famous redshift. Hubble correlated these redshifts with the distances to these galaxies, noting that the farther away a galaxy was, the more pronounced its redshift appeared to be. From this, he inferred a direct relationship. The farther a galaxy, the faster it was receding from us. At the time, this was mind-boggling. By applying Doppler shift principles, similar to how a siren's pitch changes as an ambulance speeds by, Hubble's data indicated that galaxies weren't just sitting still. They were actively moving away. To scientists of the day, the clearest explanation was that the very fabric of space-time was stretching out. Overnight, this discovery transformed our perspective of a static universe into one that was dynamic, born in a cosmic beginning, and ever since growing in scale. Following Hubble's work, Belgian priest and physicist Georges Lemaitre proposed the idea that the universe began from an extremely hot, dense state, often referred to as the primeval atom, or colloquially, the Big Bang. Over the following decades, additional evidence arose. In 1965, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, working at the Holmdel Horn Antenna in New Jersey, discovered the cosmic microwave background, CMB, radiation, an omnipresent glow in the microwave part of the spectrum, which was interpreted as the afterglow of the early hot universe. This discovery earned them the Nobel Prize in Physics and solidified the Big Bang as the standard model of cosmology. Then came another leap in the 1980s and 1990s with the study of type Ia supernovae. Scientists realized that when a white dwarf, a small, dense remnant of a star, 
ignites in a catastrophic thermonuclear explosion, it reaches a nearly uniform peak brightness under certain conditions. Specifically, if a white dwarf accrues matter from a companion star until it hits roughly 1.4 solar masses, the Chandrasekhar limit, it can trigger a supernova event. Because these supernovae were thought to detonate at essentially the same mass, they were believed to have the same intrinsic luminosity. By measuring how bright they appeared from Earth, astronomers could gauge their distance with remarkable precision, much like using a standard 100-watt light bulb to measure distances in a dark room if you assume every bulb has exactly the same wattage. Pioneering research teams, including those led by Saul Perlmutter at the Supernova Cosmology Project and Adam Rees and Brian Schmidt at the High z Supernova Search Team, studied these events. In the late 1990s, they made a stunning announcement. Distant supernovae were dimmer than expected, suggesting that the universe's rate of expansion was increasing. This led to the introduction of dark energy as the mysterious force driving accelerated expansion. Rees, Perlmutter, and Schmidt shared the 2011 Nobel Prize in Physics for this discovery. Taken together, Hubble's observations of redshifts, the CMB discovery, and the apparent uniformity of white dwarf supernova luminosities formed an unassailable triad supporting the expansion of the universe. It wasn't just that galaxies were moving away, they were accelerating away, implying some form of repulsive influence or energy permeating the cosmos. Over the past century, these findings have become the backbone of modern cosmology. We have elegant equations from Einstein's general relativity that describe how space-time can expand or contract based on the distribution of mass energy. We have detailed maps of the CMB, like those produced by the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, WMAP, and the Planck Satellite, which appear to confirm every aspect of this model. And of course, the continuing study of type IA supernovae has further refined our estimates of cosmic expansion rates. While Hubble's law, the CMB, and type IA supernova data appear compelling, consensus should never be mistaken for invulnerability. Questions have always hovered around certain assumptions. What if the uniform brightness assumption in type IA supernovae is not correct? Could there be alternative explanations for redshift that are unrelated to space-time expansion, such as photons interacting with intergalactic matter or slowly decaying over vast distances? After all, the universe is full of unknowns, from dark matter to quantum mysteries, and we're still unveiling its secrets one data point at a time. A once unthinkable shift occurred when we moved from a static to an expanding universe. Could there be another shift waiting in the wings? The current expanding universe theory is firmly supported by redshift data, the CMB, type IA supernova measurements, and general relativity. Yet in certain speculative physics scenarios, photons could decay into lighter, as yet undetected particles over exceedingly long timescales. Because we measure cosmic distances in billions of years, a decay period of comparable magnitude might evade our direct experiments. While there is no widely accepted photon decay model that aligns perfectly with observational data, the possibility remains a subject of open research. If photons lose energy over cosmic distances, then the redshift we observe might not be due solely to the expansion of space. This could introduce a systematic error in how we interpret galactic velocities. Is the expansion real, or could it be partially or even fully explained by photon energy loss? Most cosmologists argue that the data from multiple lines of evidence, especially the near-perfect blackbody spectrum of the CMB and measurements of baryon acoustic oscillations, all point toward a genuine expansion. Yet there's enough scientific curiosity to keep investigating the role of photon-matter interactions in redshift phenomena. Perhaps the most intriguing avenue for challenging the expanding universe model lies not in photon decay, but in re-evaluating standard candles, type IA supernovae. Traditionally, these supernovae were thought to result from a white dwarf that slowly accretes matter from a companion star, crossing the Chandrasekhar limit, approximately 1-4 solar masses, and exploding with a consistent luminosity. However, new observations indicate that many type IA supernovae might not come from this single uniform scenario. In some cases, white dwarfs collide with other stars or with each other, 
forming systems with different masses from the standard 1.4 solar masses. If that's true, the assumption that all type IA supernovae share the exact same intrinsic brightness may not hold. Scientists have reported simulations where two white dwarfs in a binary system spiral toward each other and merge, triggering a supernova that might reach different luminosities compared to the textbook scenario. In other systems, a white dwarf may detonate at masses below the Chandrasekhar limit, ignited by helium shell flashes, and it can still be classified as type Ia based on its spectral features, but might be intrinsically fainter or brighter. Since cosmological measurements rely on the assumption of consistent brightness, any significant variation in type Ia luminosities could introduce systematic errors in distance calculations. If many of these supernovae are collisional or sub Chandrasekhar events, it could mean the standard candle is not so standard after all. One might wonder why the majority of astrophysicists don't abandon the standard model at the first sign of anomaly. The reason lies in how scientific consensus is formed and maintained. The expanding universe theory isn't just a neat idea. It explains a wide range of data. Redshift observations, CMB measurements, the large-scale structure of the cosmos, gravitational lensing, and more. Any alternative theory must either match all these existing data points or present compelling reasons to reject or modify significant portions of the framework. Scientists also practice caution when encountering new findings because of confirmation bias and the danger of misinterpreting data. It's essential to replicate and verify anomalies before revising a well-established theory. That said, good science thrives on skepticism. If conclusive evidence emerges that suggests photon decay is real, or that type IA supernova variation is far more dramatic than we believed, the scientific community will adapt. History shows that some theories, once considered controversial, have eventually reshaped physics altogether. Nonetheless, redshift remains strongly indicative of expansion. The CMB still fits the hot Big Bang model with extraordinary precision, and type IA supernova data, even with variations, consistently align with an expanding cosmos when analyzed in aggregate. Many of these anomalies can be accounted for by refining current models rather than discarding them entirely. It's not that mainstream scientists are closed-minded. Rather, the standard model is deeply rooted in extensive supportive evidence, and dislodging it requires equally robust and wide-ranging data. None of the new challenges definitively prove the universe isn't expanding. They simply suggest that the story might be more nuanced than we currently appreciate. Though the notion of a non-expanding universe raises eyebrows, misconceptions often color public discourse. One myth is the idea that the expanding universe theory is just an unproven guess. In reality, the theory is backed by multiple independent lines of observation. Another myth is that all scientists are certain there's no alternative explanation, when in fact many scientific conferences and journals encourage exploration of anomalies. Redshift data is sometimes viewed as a one-size-fits-all phenomenon, but gravitational and local effects can also cause redshifts or blue shifts, so the concept is more nuanced than it may appear. The assumption that type Ia supernovae never vary in brightness has been updated as new data come in, and astronomers already apply corrections to account for known variations in supernova light curves. Scientific rigor demands constant scrutiny and recalibration as more discoveries are made. Healthy skepticism and the pursuit of alternative explanations are intrinsic to the scientific process. Many of history's greatest breakthroughs were once outside the mainstream. What matters is a testable hypothesis, falsifiable predictions, and consistency with the full body of evidence. Some worry that if the universe isn't expanding, then the Big Bang itself collapses and all of modern cosmology crumbles. But new interpretations might modify existing frameworks rather than discard them completely. The cosmic microwave background, large-scale structures, and other observations would still need explanation. The question would be whether the new theory could do so more comprehensively than the current model. Open questions remain. One revolves around whether type IA supernova brightness can be fully standardized if diverse mechanisms lead to different explosion masses. Another concerns photon decay, and the possibility that photons might be losing energy over cosmic distances. We also face the issue of dark energy and dark matter, 
which together dominate the energy budget of the universe, yet remain mysterious. Even within the standard model, the so-called Hubble tension persists. Local measurements of the Hubble constant differ from those inferred from early universe data. While none of these unresolved issues definitively prove that the universe isn't expanding, they invite further scrutiny. They remind us that our understanding of the cosmos is ever-evolving, and that what we believe to be the final word today might be a stepping stone to tomorrow's revelations. Every time we uncover a mystery, be it a supernova with unexpected brightness or a subtle effect on photon energy, we add another piece to the grand puzzle. Perhaps the universe isn't quite what we picture. Maybe redshift isn't only about expansion, and maybe supernova brightness isn't so standard. Yet, the most likely scenario, given the mountains of data, is that the universe really is expanding, though we may have a great deal left to learn about how that expansion unfolds and how reliable our measuring sticks really are. I've often reflected on that fourth grade lesson about color. Matter interacts with photons to produce the tapestry of hues we see. At the cosmic scale, interactions between photons and interstellar matter could, in theory, alter the readings we take for granted in our distance scales. The next generation of telescopes, like the James Webb Space Telescope, and upcoming missions to measure cosmic expansion more precisely, will likely shed new light on whether such interactions play a significant role in producing redshifts, or if expansion remains the sole dominant factor. To summarize what we've learned, Edwin Hubble's redshift measurements transformed our perspective from a static to an expanding universe. The cosmic microwave background, discovered by Penzias and Wilson, further confirmed a hot and dense early state. Type IA supernovae served as standard candles to measure distances, reinforcing the notion of cosmic acceleration and introducing dark energy. Yet recent evidence about white dwarf collisions and nuanced supernova mechanisms has led some to question how standard these candles really are. The possibility of photon decay, while currently unconfirmed, keeps the discussion alive. And finally, scientific progress hinges on both skepticism and rigorous evidence. The mainstream perspective remains that the universe is expanding, but if future observations demand a deeper revision of the model, science will adapt. In this unfolding narrative, there's as much room for wonder as there is for logic. The cosmos, after all, is vast beyond comprehension, filled with phenomena that challenge our understanding. It's logical to follow the evidence wherever it leads, to question our assumptions without falling into groundless speculation, and to remain open to new data that could alter everything. As I reflect on all this, I'm struck by the grandeur and mystery of existence itself. Whether the universe is forever stretching outward, or if some hidden mechanism is at play, we are part of an immense cosmic story, one that began long before our time and will continue to evolve long after we're gone. For now, the best we can do is keep our eyes on the skies, refine our instruments, question our theories, and remember that every new piece of data brings us one step closer to understanding the nature of reality. After all, it's logical to search for the truth, no matter how many light years away it may be.